Hi, I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing the shell mosaic necklace and this is a real fun class we're going to show you how to do and we've got all kinds of different colors for you as well with all the different types of shells and you can use it for necklace, you can use it for pendant, you can use it for all kinds of fun things. So let's get started with this project. Okay, we're going to start with a circle cut out of a gourd. So we're going to explain to you how we make these. And also to make it a little bit easier, we're now going to also carry these on the Miriam Joy website. This one, particular one here, is two and a half inches across. So we'll tell you a little bit more about that. But this is a circular hole drill bit. And what you do is you insert it into your drill and you just drill straight into your gourd. If you go nice and slow, the slower you go, the better it goes through, the smoother it is, the easier it is. Now obviously this is a lot smaller hole than these are, but it's also really good if you have a drill press to hook it up to the drill press and then just slowly bring that down. I use the uh, bit in the middle you can turn it so it is not there but it's harder to drill it that way and it has more play in it so I leave the the drill in these when on this particular one we're just gonna fill it right over with a shell or if you were doing something else you could also just fill it in with quick wood as well to fill that hole back up so that's how we get our circles now I'm also going to explain to you a little bit about the embossing gun or heat tool that we're going to use to melt our crayon which is going to be our filler for our shell or our mosaic so just any heat gun or embossing tool you can usually find them at your craft store in the um, scrapbook section and this probably will be an item that we will also start to carry on the miriamjoy.com page if you want to check there as well. So now that you've got your circle ready to go let's get started on this and we'll show you how to start. Okay, let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is glue our shell on. And to do that, I use E6000. Those of you that have worked with me know that I recommend E6000. It's a superior glue. It sticks glass to glass, stone to stone, rock, any of those really, really hard things. So we want this to stay on here. So that's why we're going to start with the E6000. And that is something that you can pick up off the Miriam Joy website if you can't find any and we're going to start by I'm going to start with the center piece right here we're going to put a stone on to cover that center piece so I want one big enough and we're just going to put it right over the top of that stone and then I'm going to work a section at a time you don't want to put out too much glue because you don't want your glue to dry out before you get your stones there and I'm going to work with tweezers and we're just going to start filling everything in as much as we possibly can. And you want the height difference. You don't want them all the same. That's what kind of gives it that really neat look. And you want to make sure that on the edge right here that your stone comes up to the edge and doesn't fall off too much there. And if you need to kind of fill in that edge first, if that's easier for you, then go ahead and do that. Whatever, however you feel that that should go. Now, in these little packets every once in a while, they have these little surprise pearls. I can't guarantee that they'll be in there, but they are in there quite a bit. And I really love them. I think they're really cool. I've been surprised how many I have found. And I think they're really add a neat element to this. And like I said, you want different pieces, high and low. 
And if you don't like the way a certain part of it looks, switch it over and check out the other side. You've got one side that's going to be shinier than the other. And you're going to have those little pointed tips that are going to work in cracks better than others. If you have a little bit hanging out, that's not too bad. And then put your next section of glue and just keep on working all the way around this and we're going to just completely finish it and once you get this all on you want to let this dry for several hours because the glue takes a while to dry and you don't want to warm it up while it's still drying because then it's going to loosen your stones my suggestion is do it today and then pick it up tomorrow. So if you were doing more than one of these at a time, you'd want to go ahead and glue them all right now and then you can finish them tomorrow. So uh, that is one little time. It takes a little bit more time to do, but with the amazing results, you don't want to rush the gluing process. So we're going to finish this up, let it set, and we'll be right back. We've glued all of our shell on and then we have let the glue dry so it's nice and secure for us. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to inlay the crayon which is kind of going to be your filler for between your mosaic pieces, kind of like grout would be for title. And we're going to use metallic crayons and what we're going to do is whatever color you're working on pick the darkest color in the box so we're going to use what they call um, this one is big dip o ruby so we're going to use that for our red and on my blue one i use steel blue and then on the tan color I used um, not the gold because the gold doesn't quite have as much metallic in it, but the um, sunburst, uh, metallic sunburst. So in the green, um, there's a great green in there as well that you could do it with. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up our crayon in our little well, and this is our Crayola crayon and we just put it directly into our melting pot and if you this is your first time seeing this this is a product that you can pick up from the miriamjoy.com website and there's a little well and we just want to fill that well up so we're just going to break that crayon off and set it right in now a new thing that you guys have not seen on the Miriam Joy website is going to be the um, the eyedroppers and I am going to be using more of those with my jewelry line that is coming up so please know that that is out there as well for you to use so now that we've got our crayon warmed up which doesn't take very long to melt we're going to use our embossing tool or heat gun and you can use it by hand but I found out as much as I'm working with this I really like a hanger and this hanger was actually a plant hanger that I found and it had a um, screw that you could put it onto the table with but I also know that there are some tools out there in the gourd world that you use to hold your um, rotary tools or your dremels on and it just really helps so that you can let go and don't have to worry about setting down or burning or anything like that this really does get really really hot a few months ago I had a round circle burn here on my arm from touching the end of it so this is a really nice feature and I just hook it wherever I want the length to go and everything so you can get as high or as low as you want it and then just kind of hook it on so that's that's fun so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to warm up just the area that we're going to work in and what this does is allows the wax to run in it easier instead of setting up on top when I first started doing this process I was doing the wax on top and we can kind of give you an example here show you the difference kind of doing the wax on top but it doesn't flow down in between the shell is easier and you're wasting a lot of your crayon or your wax so let's warm this area up
and we're only working at a small area at a time. Then we're going to get our glue dropper and we're going to fill in the cracks. That is literally all that we are doing. And you can wipe it now or you can wipe it later. It doesn't matter. Whatever you find is kind of easier for you. And you can use your fingers to wipe it with. You can use a paper towel to wipe it with. In the really hard areas, you can use a Q-tip. And you can also use your hobby knife to get some of that off as well. So now let's go ahead and work on the next section. And you want to make sure that you get all of these cracks filled up. And even along these edges, and it can roll in, that's fine. Along these edges on the end. And I'm going to wipe that a bit. Heat up the next section. And you just barely push the eyedropper. It doesn't take a lot. And with heating up the stones, it kind of just fills it out. It's kind of nice. And you can see that I'm working on a tray. Your work area can get really messy really quick with the Crayola when it's coming off and drips and everything. So we want to kind of make sure that we try to keep our area as protected as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then we will come back and show you the next step. Alright, we've got all of the wax in it so we're going to come back and we're going to clean this up now and just get all the wax off the stones as much as possible while trying to leave it in the mosaic areas, the filler areas. bunches of different ways like we talked about that you can use to clean it up and I use my fingers a lot but you also can use your q-tips on the harder areas and I'm going to try just a little bit And you also can use your knife here as well to clean these off. And don't be surprised on something like this. this is what this is is actually glue that dried. So you do want to remove that and that made it to the top of the stone and you don't want, want that kind of thing there anyway. So we're just going to clean this all up. Now if you had lower laying stones, make sure you kind of get in and clean them as well. And get it where it's all nice and shiny and it's just the shell. It is not 
the crayon on it. And you can kind of see because when you heat it back up again, you'll see a kind of bubble on top of the shell. So you know that there's still some crayon on there. Like this guy right here, he should bubble. And you know that that part is crayon and you can wipe it off. So you want to get those. And it doesn't hurt if you leave some on top. It's not a big deal. But we do want to have the contrast as much as possible. Now once we get those all cleaned up where we like them, we're going to warm it all up and we're going to put some micro beads onto it to make it um, just give it that extra little pop. I'll show you the gold and the blue and I do have the silver in here and the gold ones over here and this one I got a little bit I think too many right in the middle but it's just kind of how it ran together and you can also see the three different sizes that I have this is probably a three inch and this is probably down to maybe a one and a half inch um, circle so the different sizes of circles as well so we're going to warm the wax up one more time and just kind of where it's melted where we can put the micro beads on top it doesn't take very many at all and they're kind of bouncy if you want to do it with your fingers instead you can do it with your fingers and you can do it over a little tray and pour some of them back in but there's so little beads here that it really is not that many at all now take them off any of the stones that they may be sitting on you want them in the cracks you don't want them on the stones but it just gives it that extra little pop but you can see how much we were working this and we do not want to have the the shell come loose on it that's why it's real important to let it dry all the way so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take the sides now and we're going to scrape off all of the wax that we can now some of this will be stained and that's okay, that just means there's a wax layer there. And you want this as clean as possible. Don't want any wax left on it. Okay. And then we're going to find a paint that is close to our fill color as possible. And on this one, I've kind of used a bright red metallic. And we're going to come and paint the edges. And we're trying to match our colors that we're using as much as possible. Now we're also going to put a piece of uh, uh, suede strip on it kind of like a leather strap only it is suede leather is too thick over that area as well so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but you want your color of your gourd kind of covered up and then you can also paint your back or another thing that you could do with the back if you wanted to is to um, cover it with material or something that would not be too pokey if you wore it as a necklace it would make it just a little bit softer all right okay so we're gonna let that dry and then when we come back we're gonna get ready and we're gonna start applying our coats of varnish or gloss to it Okay, once we've let our paint dry, we're going to go ahead and put our coating over the top of it. And what we're going to use is the Maj Paj Dimensional Magic. And this is an item that we do carry. 
and it makes it nice and hard. Remember, we've still got crayon in here, so you want to be very careful. You want to get it completely covered so if it gets warm, it does not melt on you. So, because gourds aren't flat and you can't just come in and put all of this down, especially with this because it's got all these different levels, we're going to put some in the middle and don't overdo it because it's better to add some than to to have too much on here and we're going to use our brush and move it around with our brush and I need some more because you want to make sure that you really get these edges as well now like we talked about because it is crayon your first coat you're probably going to use more than your others and keep it off your sides it's real important to keep everything clear off the sides because we need to be able to get our leather piece or suede piece excuse me to stick so we want to keep them off the off the sides but we want to get down and cover those edges so if you need to walk around those edges a little bit and cover that do that and wait for it to dry and then you can apply the next coat and I would do probably when I do them I do five coats I because I want to make sure that it really is on there now I do have a little bit heavier than the coat than this so I recommend doing at least five coats I would not do any less than three at all and then this is just rinse it out with warm water and soap or a brush cleaner and then go ahead and apply your next coat and I really do like this I had been looking for a nice thick one that dries really really hard and this works really well with the jewelry process so go ahead and apply your different coats and then once you're done with that we're gonna come back and we're gonna finish it Okay, once you have finished using your protective coat over the top of it, it's nice and dry. You want to make sure you don't rush that. We're going to put our edging on. And what this does is it just really cleans it up, gives it a nice finished look. And we're going to pick a color that complements what we've done. Like on the red one that we just did, I'm going to use some red around it. And on this one, I'm going to use like a tan color because our red one's kind of finishing drying there. We want to go ahead and move forward with our video. Now remember, this is suede. It is not leather. The leather is actually too thick and doesn't work well. There's also the deer skin lacing that works really well. That's nice and thin as well. So so what I'm going to do, and um, remember we have left this with nothing on it. That was real important. We don't want anything on it. I'm going to put a little bit of tacky glue, and I'm probably going to try and figure out where I want this to be. I probably want this to be like my bottom right here. So I'm going to put the pins in at the bottom. And it really doesn't matter. I just don't want them to show up at the top. And we're just going to put a tiny amount right now in there. And we're going to set our lacing on. And then I'm going to take an awl. And I'm going to poke a hole through the lacing into the gourd. You want to go, I probably went about that far down. And then what we're going to do, I've still got micro dots running everywhere, is we're going to take one of our pins and I'm going to use my thimble and I'm going to take my little pin and I'm going to stick it in that hole and I'm going to push it in with my thimble. Now, when you push it in, you want to make sure that you're going straight in. You don't want to go towards the front. If you have to angle it, make sure you're going towards the back. But you want to stick it just in to the gourd piece itself. Now, 
lesson learned for me was I didn't realize thimbles came in different sizes and as I thought my hands were always smaller but I needed a larger thimble but that really pushes it in nice and neat if you bend your pin at all stop take it out and get a new one and start all over now I only work with the tacky glue for this process I found that it works the best for me so I am going to go ahead and finish gluing this now and we got this nice little convenient size so if you need some tacky glue we do have it available and I like it because you're not dealing with a whole big bottle full and waiting for it to come down it's just right there when you need it when I'm working with my tacky glue I lay it on the side instead of setting it straight up so that the air bubbles don't come to the top so when I set it down I set it down like that so that way when I pick it up next time it is ready to go and I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna wipe the glue off try not to get it onto your cording and we're gonna take that all the way around and when we take that all the way around you want to make sure it's nice and tight but not coming off anywhere and if you have a thicker piece you probably want to move it towards the front if you have wider part of your gourd you want that to be in the back so this is the clean part so now we're going to come in and right here is where we're meeting so we're going to poke another hole right there again and remember some gourds are harder than others and some are softer so if your gourd piece is giving you a little bit of a hard time that's okay now see we've got that sh that pin probably halfway in and that's kind of the trick to doing this and I poked it through and poked myself so I've got to restart this guy and try and get him to go more towards the front so you know I do mess up too and I bent him so again if I told you if you bend him get rid of him and you can use your pliers to pull him out so I'm going to put this hole in again and you can always put a little bit of glue in with it and this is really good to, for you to see because sometimes it's a little bit hard to get that process down so I know it makes it look easy but don't remember I've done this a little bit now we're going to trim this and you don't want to trim it so there's no part touching and you want it to touch you don't want to leave any open space is what we're trying to say there so just trim it off and there we've got that all the way around Make sure we've got that nice and even on here. I would let it dry, but we're going to go ahead and finish it up. And we're going to figure out how we want it to hang. And again, I'm going to poke a hole. Now, if your gourd piece was thicker and you could poke the hole behind it, which I think I'm still going to do. I'm going to try and poke behind the leather. If you have to go through the leather, that is okay too and we're going to use a screw eye and I found the smallest ones I could find and these are half inch I believe we do have these on our website available in 10 per packet for you so that you can find them and you're simply going to start in that hole and you're going to screw that on 
and I'm going to turn it flat with my piece. And like I said, if your piece is so narrow, just poke that hole and go through your, your strap, okay? And then we're going to use our jump ring and put it onto the necklace. We're gonna open our jump ring up here. We're gonna put it through the eye screw and onto the necklace. And this will also make it hang straight. You want it going, remember the one on the necklace, the screw eye needs to be flat, not the other direction so that the necklace will hang straight. And you could find, if you can find different um, color necklaces or chains that you want to put it on there to help bring that out. Or if you even wanted to do this part black to match your necklace, you can as well. So there's different options that you have. So there is our wonderful necklace. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this. And this is just the beginning of our jewelry line that we're getting ready to launch. We kind of want to get you excited. Also remember that you can make it as a pin and just glue the pin to the back. I would just put the E6000, glue it straight on, and you would be ready to go. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do with it. Don't get just stuck using what I have done. Now, I know that sometimes when you get something like this and we have all of these little items and you're running around trying to pick them all up to do the project and it's kind of hard. So we've made a little packet and it will come like that and you will have what you need in here to get you going. We're going to start with our gourd piece and you can pick which color you want and then you will get your shells to go with it. You will also get the crayon color that is in conjunction with the shell. You will get your little uh, piece of suede that wraps around your little uh, gourd piece so that you have that. You're also going to get your little micro beads and there's probably double in here or more than what you'll need. The eyedropper. And in this little packet here, we have about 10 of the little pins, which is way more than you should need, just giving you a couple extra. You're gonna have your jump ring and your screw eye as well as your necklace. So that you should have all of the little items that you need, um, other than like your E6000, your tacky glue, and your Mod Podge, and those will be separate, and those are up on our page if you need those as well. So I think you had, excuse me, I think you had, I had a great time. I hope you have as much fun playing with it as I did. Again, we will be launching our jewelry uh, tutorial videos and we'll have those and let you know when those are available on the web uh, the website working with the crayons as well as showing you how to sew the beads around that which you could also do with this project as well so if you have any questions please email me at art at miriamjoy.com come back watch some more videos we'll have some more fun god bless